I'm back for another game hunt, and this time I'm heading into the big city. So we're just here at the Albert Docks in Liverpool, um, just been through the city centre 
never been really to Liverpool to shop before. I've been to one CEX, picked up a few things. Uh, a little bit disappointing that CEX, I must admit. Whenever I've always looked on the app, there always seems to be loads of games there that I'm after, but there's not a lot there today. So we're just having a look around Albert Docks now, uh, get something to eat, and then hopefully see if I can find this other CEX which is in Liverpool Central. So let's go. Liverpool done. Nice look around. CEX stores are quite small actually compared to some other places. Um, but yeah, lovely day as well. So uh, let's get back to the games room and I'll show you what I picked up. Hi everyone and welcome to channel Pixel Paul with me, the man they call Pixel Paul. If you are not already subs subscribed to the channel, if you can hit that subscription button, that would be awesome. And that was me out and about in the big city. The big city, and that city was, of course, the city of Liverpool in the northwest of England. And I've never really been there before. That's a lie, exaggeration, whatever. It's I have been before for work, a um, very sort of brief walk through the city. But I've never actually been game hunting in the city. And I don't often do game hunting in big cities. So when you've watched my game hunting videos before in the past, you'll know that I've visited various places, Bolton's, Warrington's, Oldham's, all these different places, Stockport. But I don't really go to I don't really go to Manchester. So Manchester is the nearest big city to me. And there's a reason for that and that is that I tend to find that there's not a huge amount in city centres. Now, whenever we talk about some of the sort of independent stores that we all know around the country, a lot of them tend to be outside of city centres. They tend to be in the smaller sort of towns, really. So you don't get too many independent stores in cities. I could be wrong. I mean, my sort of range and knowledge of, of stores around the country is not great. It's good enough, but... If there are any independent stores in city centres, then please let me know, ideally in the north. But um, yeah, to my knowledge, a lot of these sort of uh, independent game stores, retro game stores, tend to be outside of city centres, probably because it's cheaper. You know, city centre um, rents on stores is probably way more than you know what it is in smaller town centres. So I imagine that's probably what it is. And it does mean that when you go game hunting in cities, it tends to be the usual suspects really. So game, if you're lucky, game in Sports Direct or somewhere else, um, and CEX, of course. Now, city centres do tend to have charity shops, um, but because of the footfall, I think, um, you know, there's, there's so many people going through. Most of them have like university, so you've got students going into them as well. So there's never that much in the city centre charity shops either, games-wise. So... As you saw from my visit today, yeah, it was um, a little bit sparse for games. Had a cracking day though, the weather was beautiful and we had a really nice walk around Albert Docks. Um, like I said, I've never been to that sort of part of Liverpool before. Really nice around there. That shop that we went in was at the House of Spells, I think it was called. That's an amazing place. If you if you are ever in Liverpool and you go to the docks, it's worth looking there. I'm not a massive Harry Potter fan or anything particularly. Um 
But yeah, if you're a Harry Potter fan, or if you just that, like any kind of sort of uh, fantasy type stuff, it's a yeah, really nice shop. It's just nice to go into a store that has a little bit of imagination and a bit of effort goes into it. And uh, yeah, I love uh, little stores like that. So yeah, it's worth a look in there if you uh, are ever in Liverpool. Thoroughly recommend it. Um, but yeah, really nice look around at the Albert Docks. We had a look around the city centre of Liverpool as well. So it was a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be, actually. Um, you could get lost quite easily. Um, I know Manchester like the back of my hand these days, but when I went to Liverpool, it just felt very big and very sort of overwhelming. So, um, but yeah, it was a great day. Um, but yeah, the CEX, two CEX stores, there was a game there as well. No pre-owned stock, obviously. Um, I did wonder if maybe they might have a little bit of pre-owned stock left in that Liverpool City Centre, just because it's a high street store and not a store based in a uh, Sports Direct or somewhere, but they didn't have any pre-owned stock whatsoever. So I wasn't in game very long, very much in and out, and that is probably how it's going to be for game and me in the foreseeable future. CEX, though, there were two CEX stores in Liverpool. Um, now... <laughs> I don't, I've not come across a city where there is two. No, that's a lie. I think Newcastle has two CEX. Obviously, Liverpool, uh, London has probably got quite a few. But um, yeah, I know, I think Newcastle has two CEX stores. Um, and, uh, but yeah, Liverpool had two. Uh, one was a sort of regular size with a downstairs as well. All the retro games were sort of downstairs. The, not well, the, let's say retro, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PS2, Wii. DS, all that stuff was sort of downstairs. Uh, and then the upstairs uh, was the sort of newer stuff. Some nice retro stuff in there as well. They had a lovely copy of Super Pro... Is it Mega Pro Protector or is it still Super Pro Protector? It might, it might just be Pro Protector on the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, I think it was £130, so that's pricey. But yeah, nice copy of that. And then the second CEX was... Um, it, so it's kind of in Liverpool Central, which is the train station. And it's a lot smaller. In fact, I would go as far to say as that is the smallest CEX I've ever been in. I thought the CEX in, there's a place called Middleton, that was quite small. Um, but this one was tiny. It was like the size of a regular kind of news agents. But I tell you what, they packed some stuff in there. Um, every sort of format was still catered for. They still had a little bit of retro as well. Um, so yeah, nice little CEX store, but very, very tight, very cramped. When you go to buy something at the till, you were sort of rammed, hemmed in a little bit with people. But um, no, nice little store, that one in Liverpool Central. Anyway, let's get to the games that I picked up, shall we? I have picked up a few, not loads, but I've picked up a few. and We'll have a look at those now. Cheers, everyone. Okay, games. Let's have a look at the games I got then. So there were a few that I knew were there and I was going to pick up. There was one game which I had earmarked to get and I completely forgot to pick it up. I forgot it was there. I don't know why. It was Shinobi on the Nintendo 3DS. Um, it was one of the games that I'd marked in my head to pick up and it just completely left. It just didn't go in and I didn't pick it up. So not to worry, I will find that again some other day because I'm sure I'll go game hunting again at some point. So the games that I did pick up... Let's go straight into them. So I've got, uh, first up, Xbox 360. Uh, this was £3, Burnout Paradise. Uh, nice little edition. Um, I haven't got this on the 360. So, um, yeah, some people aren't keen on Burnout Paradise. It's a open world racer. Um, I think I probably would agree. I do prefer Burnout when it was just race after race, set sort of races, rather than open world. Um, I think this was the last Burnout game as well. It kind of killed the series off a little bit, which is a shame. Um, I do love the cover. Uh, but yeah, three quid. Um, nice to add that into the 360 collection. Uh, next up, now this was one that I had earmarked to get. And um, I've been picking up a few Xbox Kinect games recently. And um, this was one that I hadn't got. So I, uh, I had earmarked it to get it. And it is... Fable the Journey. So, yeah. Um, I don't think it's got brilliant... I don't think it had brilliant reviews, this, when it came out. I certainly know, uh, is it Pete Molyneux, the creator of Fable, was not a big fan of Kinect at all. I don't, don't think... I may be wrong, but I don't think he was particularly keen for this series to go on to Kinect and become quite gimmicky like this. But uh, at £1.50... Um, 
it was kind of this i can't think of many more connect games that i want to get this was like the last missing piece of the puzzle if you like i just wanted to pick this up um so i've got all the fable games now as well um i'll probably give it a go at some point if i can um it's covered in stickers though that's the only thing so we'll have to get that off rent if you get that reference uh, let me know in the comments but yeah i don't that must have been an ex rental copy rent uh but yeah fable the journey nice to pick that one up uh next one up now i'll show it you and you'll go surely you've got that already and you would be right it is gears of war xbox 360 one pound for this absolute classic game and yes you're right i do have gears of war already um i've got the special edition tin version of it um, and i also have my original copy of gears of war which i got with my first xbox 360 um so the reason i got this one is because and i'll grab the other copy very quickly so my original copy that i got with my 360 has that really annoying well it is to me anyway really annoying yellow banner across the front bundle copy uh not for resale and um it just it's always annoyed me i would never trade this one in because this is the first game that i got with my xbox 360 all the games that i first get for every console i ever buy i always keep so i will keep this copy but i just wanted wanted a copy with a nice clean cover just that front cover like that um don't know why just at a pound just it made me happy so leave it with me um but yeah those banners really just annoy me i know some people really like these and i know people like to collect things that are a little bit different um so i think these sort of yellow banner games are becoming a bit of a thing where people go out and collect them um it's not for me though it just ruins the front cover personally um so yeah so i was quite happy to finally get hold of a uh flawless front cover version of gears of war absolutely amazing game brilliant game next up um i picked up this copy of street super street fighter 4 and it's the nice slip cover sleeve version of this as well so it's four pounds standard uh price for the sort of standard version of super street fighter 4 but yeah the, the got it really because the sleeve which is in absolutely immaculate condition really nice condition on that and um, so at four pounds i love the front cover on that that's brilliant isn't it i love the artwork from street fighter 4 um slightly sort of different direction from the other street fighter games and um, even from uh, the latest street fighter game so um yeah love that love that cover brilliant game super street fighter 4 uh, four pounds pleased to get that one next up i've got two playstation 2 games and the first one is now i've got the first game of this and for some reason i always thought i had the sequel the second one but i have got it but i've got for some reason and i don't remember when i got it i've got a pc version of of this game um but i'd never picked up the playstation 2 version of it and that game is max Payne 2 the fall of max Payne. and again that is an amazing front cover to this game brilliant game as well really good um, i have played it before not the pc version though i've played this version before um but yeah love the front cover on that just so very uh is it noir is that what they call it um yeah brilliant front cover to that one uh five pounds that was i think that's gone up in price slightly recently so um yeah nice to get that great disc great instruction booklet on that too love the black and white kind of uh theming to to that game so yeah brilliant game really happy to pick that one up now uh, film noir that's the word i was trying to think of so yeah max Payne 2 another game which has been on my radar a little bit it's kind of it's not one i've ever sort of really tried to get but i did knew, know that this was in stock and um i thought i'd grab it while it was there a bit like chase the express in a way it's one of those games that you kind of hear about you maybe see once or twice chase the express i got in the last pickups video by the way sorry for the playstation one um and this is sort of similar in a way uh, and that game is spy fiction on the ps2 um but yeah it's just one that i know of i've heard of i i think there's something about this game that has potential to maybe go up in value which it already has so i got it for 10 pounds it's already gone up recently to 12 pounds probably in the last couple of days actually 
Uh, so I've got that just in time. <laughs> Two pounds saved. Um, so yeah, ten pound for Spy Fiction. We'll see what that's like. Um, I'm assuming it's a bit of a sort of Metal Gear clone, Siphon Filter clone, with a bit of Mission Impossible, perhaps. Um, but yeah, looks all right. Spy Fiction. And then the last two, uh, PlayStation 4 VR, of course. Old Bruce up there with my VR headset. Yeah, another VR game. Uh, £3.50 for this one. And it is Riggs. Riggs. It's hard to say that. It's not hard to say that. It just sounds weird. Riggs. Mechanised Combat League. £3.50. I don't know why it's £3.50. Most of the VR games on PlayStation 4 seem to be sort of £4.00. Why that's three pound fifty? I don't know, um, but yeah, don't know much about this one. Um, sort of like mechanized sport kind of game, um, but yeah, we'll see what this is like. Rigs, mechanized combat league, sounds a bit like uh, that Hugh Jackman film, Real Steel. Well, that was more boxing, wasn't it? But anyway, we'll see what this is like. Um, looks interesting enough. Three pound fifty, cheapest chips. And then the last game that I picked up, like I said, I didn't pick a load up, but the last game I did get, um, I don't see this one out in CEX that often. I've seen it online, Amazon have had it for ages, but I've not seen too many copies of this, um, even in like game in the past. Uh, I think it goes for about sort of £20 on Amazon, probably a little bit more maybe in, in game. Um, I got this for £15, so it's the most expensive game I bought um, uh, on, my, on this visit. And it is Streets of Rage 4. So I've been on a little bit of a uh, scrolling beat em up adventure craze, fad, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, uh, recently because I picked up Final Vendetta, I've been playing the Turtles compilation, Shredder's Revenge, and a few others. Um, but yeah, Streets of Rage 4 has been one that I've been wanting to try, want, wanting to play, and I finally got a copy of it, £15, which is not a bad price for it. I've given it a go already, and I've got to say, I'm quite liking it. The only thing I would say about it is the score, the soundtrack is not quite as... It just doesn't seem to have that same nostalgia kick that maybe the Mega Drive trilogy gives you. There's just something a little bit missing from it. I don't know whether it's a 90s thing. Um, it's a little bit kind of more bland, but maybe it gets better as you go through the game. But yeah. It's more Streets of Rage, it's more scrolling beat em up, it's just, you know, they do what they do, don't they? So, um, yeah, quite enjoying that at the moment. Really pleased to pick it up, finally. Again, really love the front cover to this. Very sort of bold and striking, and it's got a great spine as well, so that'll look great on the shelves. So, yeah, really happy to get that. Streets of Rage 4 Anniversary Edition. That was the last pickup of the day. So yeah, I didn't come away with a huge amount of games, but I came away with some games that I really wanted, that I was earmarked to get and uh, managed to pick up. Forgot to pick one of them up, but hey ho. Um, but yeah, one or two of these, really sort of pleased to get these finally. Um, that Streets of Rage, really, really happy to get that finally uh, and really enjoying playing it. And that Street Fighter 4 was a little bonus as well with the, the slipcase, because um, it's really nice that. Um, nice to get Spy Fiction. And uh, nice to get that Max Payne as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's a game that I'm going to dive back into at some point. Because um, I remember really liking that. So, yeah, another little mixed bunch, but nice little stack of games there. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, really appreciate it, as always. Hope you enjoyed that little sort of trip around Liverpool and a look at those games that I've picked up. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, if you can hit that subscription button, that would be awesome. And I will see you for the next one.